There's a hero. Kevin Ship is a hero. If we had more like Kevin, and I, I think with the kind of courage Kevin shows, he has inspired others to start coming to the surface. And if all of us provide the cover, and this is key, it's up to us to provide the cover for those in academia, those in agencies, those in the military who know this is going on. It's up to us to provide the cover for them to come out of the shadows. And if we leave here tonight and go back to simply carrying out about our lives as we did before, we're missing the point. It's up to all of us to provide the cover that people in these agencies, military and academia need to come out of the shadows and change the equation. And this is one man that's helped it happen. I have a round of applause for Kevin Schiff, whom I respect very much. Thank you, Dane. Uh, I, uh, I always start by saying I, I refer to myself as a recovering CIA officer. And uh, we don't go through 12-step programs. We go, go through 24-step programs. And the first 12 steps are learning how to tell the truth again. That's the hard one. Uh, and there are, there are some benefits for being a CIA whistleblower, believe it or not. My mail is open before I get it, which is kind of convenient. My cell phone turns itself on and off all by itself. You know? Usually when I'm talking, you can ask my wife, when I come to things like this, it turns itself on, records our conversations, then saves it to my voicemail. That, that actually happens. And another benefit, if I'm, if I'm out driving around traveling and I'm lost, there's always somebody following me. I go back and ask directions, I'm good to go. <laughs> so uh, this, uh, this is a, 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 gonna be a serious lecture uh, this evening. This is, uh, without a doubt, probably the most important speech I've ever given, and it's probably the most personally risky also. Uh, I come from the belly of the beast, uh, the cult-like world of secrecy that operates behind what we see as our elected government, uh, the belly of, of the beast. Um, I came out to expose this because I saw specifically, in my case, the CIA engage in unconstitutional and illegal activity outside of the Constitution, which for me is everything now. I saw them uh, violate international law with some of their operations and engage in some pretty serious human rights violations. Now, I don't know about you all, but I, as an American citizen, I did not vote for any of those things. And our elected government didn't vote for any of those things, but they're doing them, and I'll show you, I'll show you why. I hope tonight, hope and pray, that tonight this speech makes a difference, what I'm about to show you. And I hope tonight it starts kind of a social civil revolution when we stand up against this tyrannical system here that has stepped outside our Constitution and engaged in egregious things. It needs to be reformed, maybe even dismantled. If I can have a hand in that, then, then uh, thank God. They, I'm gonna talk about the shadow government. Now, you hear a lot of talk out there about the deep state all over the place the, on news and talk shows. See, it's safe to talk about the deep state now because there's no real risk. It's gotten kind of popular. Some of us were talking about the secret government in 2012 when it was not popular, and it was a little tough. Everybody's talking about the deep state, but they're not, and there's some good folks out there talking about that, but they're not giving everybody the full picture because, and they use the, the terms uh, deep state and shadow government as if they're one and the same. They are not one and the same. They are two different entities in a vast trillion dollar matrix that is now controlling our elected government outside the Constitution behind Washington, D.C. I'm gonna show you how they do it. We got a lot of stuff to cover. Forgive me, I'm gonna have to roll through a lot of this and I'm hoping by the end, uh, some of your jaws may drop, but at least uh, you're gonna see what's going on. All of you, because I talk to people all the time, know that this government is functioning secretly and doing things that it shouldn't. You've seen it, you know it in your gut, you sense it. Every single person I talk to, including in the dining room this morning, yeah, we all, something's not right here. Something is not right with our government. So let's get into this. I wanna start by saying this because it is so important. We are, or at least were, a constitutional government. Were we not? Yes. Our government is founded on the Constitution and the Bill of Rights, isn't it? Yes. Now, I wanna remind people that the Constitution is not a nice, fluffy, philosophical document. It's not just a good piece of ideology. It is the law of the United States. It is the supreme law of the land, and it supersedes the entire rest of the U.S. criminal justice system. 
So if a person, including the government, violates the Constitution, they have committed a felony. So let's just remember that. If the government violates the Constitution, they have committed a felony. So if they try to make the people look like the bad guys, we'll find out really it works the other direction. Remember this, it is the Constitution. That is the reason I'm standing up here because we no longer live in a constitutional government. We are serving under a post-constitutional government staffed by congressmen who are now statesmen. So let's move on. The shadow government and the deep state are not the same thing. You hear people say this, well, the deep state is after Donald Trump because they're holdovers from the Obama administration that are penetrators into, into the CIA and others. Ladies and gentlemen, that is a smokescreen. <clears throat> I'll show you that the shadow government is not leftover Obama people. It is a matrix system that has functioned across every single admi administration going back to JFK, Republican and Democrats alike. So the shadow government is a secret part of government, the CIA, the NSA, and I'll show you a host of other secret intelligence agencies that are part of the shadow government. It functions through the unbridled, unconstitutional power of secrecy. That's the shadow government. Beneath the shadow government is what you hear a lot of talk about. It's called the deep state. Now the deep state is this massive, financial, multi-billion dollar, trillion dollar matrix that includes the military industrial complex. All of you probably have heard about. I'll shed a little bit more light on that. Uh, the deep state functions in the same matrix connected to the shadow government, but much of the time the shadow government rules the deep state through the power of secrecy. Secrecy agreements, the state secrets privilege, and, and other things. So they are intimately connected in running our government behind the scenes. They manipulate our elected government behind the scenes. Now that is a dramatic statement. I think by the end of tonight, I'm gonna to prove to you that it's going on. I saw it personally. There's a lot of things I can't talk about. I have to watch everything I say, honestly. Uh, for the last 15 years, they've just been waiting for me to make one mistake. I haven't made it yet. So let's talk about this, the shadow government and the deep state. Deep state is run by money, power, and greed. That's what runs the deep state. The shadow government, their fuel is fear and intimidation. Here's the, the shadow or secret government, the unconstitutional power of government secrecy. This, I'm gonna show you the components of the secret government, many of them that fun, function outside the Constitution. The director of national intelligence has 17 intelligence agencies underneath him at this point. Uh, that, that process, 90 to, to uh, 90 to, to, to 100,000 bits of classified information a day, some of which should not be classified. You've got the Department of Homeland Security, secret agencies there. You've got the Department of State. Hillary Clinton ran guns into Benghazi secretly using Saudi Arabia and Qatar. Most people don't know that. She did it through the secret system. You've got the Defense Intelligence Agency that engaged in the torture program. Some people died. They also tried to, to uh, recruit American citizens to be informants within the United States. I mean, I, this, this is... Folks, this is an eight hour lecture, so I'm gonna have to pack some of this in there because there's just so much here. But anyway, you got the National Reconnaissance, Office, National Reconnaissance Office that runs the satellite program, all the birds that are up there, and there is a bunch of them. You have the National Geospatial Intelligence Agency, the big secret agency that worked with Google through a big con contract that, and set up Google Earth. So Google worked with the National Geospatial Intelligence Agency through CIA InQtel to set up Google Earth. So you think it's only Google watching you? It's not. Sadly, Silicon Valley has been recruited by the shadow government. Let's move. JSOC, Joint Special Operations Command. Most people don't know about it, but this is the president's secret army. The president of the United States has his own secret army, special operators that, that he sends on presidential order into foreign countries in secret to engage in killings, overturning governments, and things that the American people don't know about. It's a secret force. Then you've got the FBI conducting warrantless searches, uh, national security letters where they come into your business and, and order your supervisor to turn over all of your financial records and if he or she says anything about them being there, they put your supervisor in jail. Violation of the Fourth Amendment. Now I'm gonna talk specifically tonight because this is so vast about the two, I consider the two top tiers of what I call the shadow government or the secret government. The first of that is the National Security Agency. Heard a lot about them, haven't we? <laughs> I'm working with William Binney, the NSA whistleblower who blew the whistle on, on uh, the NSA surveillance program, house raided by a SWAT team, he's a gun put to his head. Uh, we'll talk about the NSA a little bit. I'm gonna focus on what I call the central node of the shadow government, an unconstitutional agency that used to be my life. And I was a senior managing, managing uh, uh, a supervisor there in counterintelligence and other things I'll talk about later. It is this one right here, 
that is the node, the central node of the shadow government, functions outside the Constitution through the power of secrecy, and not even Congress knows everything that it's doing. Is there a constitutional problem with that? You better believe there is. I'll show you exactly how bad that is. The CIA was created through the Council on Foreign Relations, which started back in 1921. They, they were instrumental in creating the CIA. The CFR was, and back when the CFR created the CIA, they were tied directly into, guess who? The mainstream media. The owners of the Washington Post, the Grams, were members, ranking members of the Council on Foreign Relations. The CIA was feeding information directly into the Washington Post. Philip and Catherine Graham were publishing stories that the CIA had told them to study. Now, in the long, wonderful history of the Washington Post, who owns the Washington Post now? Bezos. Jeff Bezos of Amazon. What did he just do? He entered into a $6 million contract with, guess who? CIA. The CIA. So the circle continues. I could spend an hour on the mainstream media's connection to intelligence. Sadly, we don't have that time. But just understand that the, the CFR was instrumental in creating the CIA. They were directly connected to the mainstream media and uh, the Washington Post, New York Times, CBS, and others that were feeding information directly to the CIA to be published to alter the opinions of the American people. Okay, we'll just leave that there for now. The deep state, let's talk about what makes up the deep state. Underneath, if you can see, I put the deep state underneath the shadow government because the shadow government is the, this powerful monolith outside the Constitution. Much of the deep state, the military industrial complex is not violating the Constitution, but they are controlling our elected officials. Okay, so there's a little bit difference, but they, they are connected uh, pretty intimately. In that, you've got the military industrial complex. Everybody's heard about that probably. What you haven't heard is Eisenhower originally called it the military industrial congressional complex because Congress is tied in so deeply with the military industrial con complex and the deep state that they manipulate what the congressmen and senators do and how they vote and I will prove that tonight. So Congress is just as tied into the military industrial complex as Lockheed Martin, uh, General Dynamics and the others are. Who is the main representative in our government of the people? Congress, right? If they own Congress, we, know, we don't have a vote or a voice anymore. And that's the idea. All right, let's go through some of them. They own the intelligence contractors, the defense contractors. We're talking billions of dollars here in revenue that comes from your taxes. The military industrial complex, about $4.8 million a year is spent by military industrial com complex, uh, the lobbyists to influence con Congress and put money into their PACs, leadership PACs, re-election campaigns and others to the tune of four or five million dollars a year. Huge impact on Congress. There's foreign lobbyists Saudi Arabia and Israel might as well have a congressional slot on Capitol Hill. They are, they are so influential on our government that they actually have a serious impact on, on political decisions in Washington. You've got the Federal Reserve, the secret bank, the secret bank that just gave out a couple trillion dollars to some unknown corporations in the military industrial complex that they won't tell anybody about because their deliberations are secret. With whose money? With our money. So the Federal Reserve is tied in, in with this. The, uh, we've got Wall Street. Wall Street funds all of this, the military industrial complex. Wall Street is so plugged in to the military industrial complex and the shadow government. It was Wall Street attorneys that formed the CIA. Wall Street has been in the shadow government and the deep state going back to 1947. So they're a part of the deep state. You've got the central banks connected to the Federal Reserve. The Federal Reserve is connected to the International Monetary Fund and the World Bank because the CFR's stated goal was eventually and still is an economic global government. And they're merging through special drawing rights into digital currency eventually. And, and that's uh, where that started. Wall Street is so connected with the Department of Treasury in business with all of this, they might as well just be business partners in a, in a financial conglomerate. Our government and Wall Street are almost one and the same in the deep state. Trillions and trillions of dollars. All right, it is the system behind government. You can see that I made that S a dollar sign because the fuel of this system is money. And to get that money, they have to keep us in a state of perpetual war. Anybody seen that going on? More on that later. All right, let's move. Secrecy inside the United States. The Central Intelligence Agency and its contractors are supposed to have an overseas mission only, right? Collecting and spying on foreign governments. They're not supposed to have a mission or function inside the United States. However, William Arkin and Dana Priest did an incredible piece of journalism and dug some of this up. There are 10, after 9-11, spend an hour on that. Uh, 
After 9-11, there are now 10,000 secret sites within the United States under the shadow government. 10,000 sites inside the United States. 1,271 government agencies, secret agencies now involved in secrecy inside the United States. 1,931 large private corporations like Lockheed Martin are now involved in the secret government, the NSA and the CIA inside the United States. 4,800,000 Americans that we know of, and probably half, uh, probably, that's probably just half the figure, have US government security clearances. And they've signed a secrecy agreement. I'll explain what that means in a little bit. 854,000 they found have top secret clearances. Far more than that. Hundreds of thousands of military industrial complex employees from secretaries to people in the mailroom to CEOs have all signed NSA or CIA secrecy agreements and they are now bound from saying anything about anything they see, even if it's illegal or unconstitutional. There is a system of personal destruction uh, that will ruin them if they even insinuate they're gonna say anything. I'll talk about that in a little bit. Each one signs a secrecy agreement. If they blow the whistle, I'm speaking from personal experience, <clears throat> excuse me, if they blow the whistle, the government has the power <clears throat> to institute what's called a state secrets privilege and shut their case down, seal it in court, and throw them in prison if they talk to anybody about their case, classified or not. I've seen a case just like that. They had that kind of power. You blow the whistle in the CIA, after, after a system of personal destruction, they will slap the state secrets privilege on you, and if you talk to your wife or your attorney, they will put you in prison. Here we go, the military industrial complex, or the military industrial congressional complex. This is an example of its power, control, and manipulation of the US Congress, our representatives, the voice of the people. In the center of this, you have the Congressional Armed Services Committee. These are the people, 48 senior, senior members, congressmen and senators, get together under the Defense Authorization Act and decide how much, how much trillions of dollars they're gonna spend on military industrial, on the military, and on intelligence. It is the deliberations that you, as you would imagine, are done in secret. N nobody knows uh, how much money they're gonna sign to that. But I want you to look at this. These 48 senior members of the Armed Services Committee are under the influence of the five biggest military industrial contractors. Lockheed Martin, did you know? Lockheed Martin is the chief surveillance information processor for the CIA, the NSA, and the FBI. Did you know that? Did you know that Lockheed Martin has created a program that tracks every contact that every American has with the IRS? Your phone calls, your emails, the payments that you're making, all run through Lockheed Martin, which is the equivalent almost of a private second government. It is so big. It is funded so heavily, we figured out the average household in America has what could be called a Lockheed Martin tax. $260 comes out of each one of our pocket every year to pay this company, basically to spy on us through the NSA and the CIA, to track our IRS actions, they even track our packages coming through the US Postal Service, and they develop the biometric programs that the government is using to track Americans. Good old Lockheed Martin. Not to mention the uh, ballistic missiles that they, they make to sell to uh, foreign governments. But we'll just leave that one aside for now. Northrop Grumman, Raytheon, Boeing, Booz Allen and Hamlin, the big dog on the block. You don't hear much about Booz Allen and Hamilton except for Ed Edward Snowden. Booz Allen Hamilton for 30 years has been the second arm of the CIA. So much so they helped set up the intelligence system for the government of Egypt. Booz Allen Hamilton did. And that's of course who Snowden were for. Now I want you to see this. 48 senior members influenced by these massive corporations, right? One trillion dollars in annual tax revenue spending for the military industrial complex that comes out of our pockets. Forty-six billion dollars of that is in foreign arms sales. Guess who the biggest arms dealer in the world is? Us. Guess who supplies weapons, bullets, tanks, and missiles to foreign governments more than anyone else in the world? Us. Sadly, I can tell you, it ain't the Russians. <laughs> okay. Why do, you think they're, why do you think they're pushing the Russian story so hard? It's called a diversion, right? A smokescreen. Now I want you to see Lockheed, Northrop, Booz, Raytheon, and the rest. This is how much they contribute into these congressmen and senators' re-election campaigns and leadership packs in a year. 
$700,000 they contribute to each one of these senior members of the defense that vote on the, the Defense Authorization Act. Do you think they have an influence over what these congressmen and others vote for or vote down? They control them. They're all a union. Well, yeah, yeah, the dark union, the, the dark side union, yeah. Yeah, no doubt. And despite his recent illness, which is irrelevant to this presentation, we've got the poster boy of the military industrial complex, Senator John McCain. Who, who, if you haven't noticed, if you haven't noticed, is on every talk show and every news program pushing what? War, arms, covert action, overturning Ukrainian government, Syria, and all of that. Do you know why that is? Could it be because Senator McCain is given $694,508 a year in contributions from these big dogs a year? Do you think maybe there's a conflict of interest there that's causing old John to get out there and do this? War is big money for John McCain. So can you see how the military industrial complex manip manipulates the Congress and the Senate of the United States? And there's more, far more manipulation than this. I'm distilling down kind of the bullseye of how it does it. Let's go. What most people don't know about until tonight, there is what I call a secret intelligence industrial complex. It's secret. Nope, you don't know it's there. In the center of that, you have the shadow government, the CIA, the NSA, the National Geospatial Intelligence Agency, and the NRO. That is the secret government. Massive, massive. Around that, however, you have got the big five conglomerate uh, intelligence contractors, just like the military industrial complex. For example, Leaders Holdings, massive corporation, does the bulk of the CIA and NSA secret classified work that nobody knows about. CSRA, another big one. CACI, they're the ones who ran the Abu Ghraib torture program where they, they, and trust me folks, the torture program was not just waterboarding. That is a bunch of baloney. And for them to say that it yielded actionable intelligence is also a bunch of baloney. They got no legitimate intelligence out of the torture program at all. That is a fact. SAIC, who blew the NSA uh, trailblazer program, which Thomas Drake came out and blew the whistle on, related to domestic surveillance, lost $7 billion of taxpayer money, and they're still employed by the government. See, they, they, they engage in fraud, abuse, waste of money, failed programs, and the government covers it all up. The taxpayer who fund these things never even find out that they did it. SAIC, along with Booz Allen and Hamilton, lost $7 billion in a failed NSA program of taxpayer dollars. Did you read that in the paper anywhere? Anybody? No. No, of course not. And there's the big dog Booz Allen Hamilton, uh, former home of Edward Snowden. $50 billion annual tax revenue a year is what goes into the secret intelligence industrial complex that no one knows about. Look at this. It's all top secret unreported work. They report to no one. They are accountable to no one. They're not accountable to Congress. Most of the time, they're not accountable to the president. We'll talk about him or her later, what the office of the president is and is not. And there is no accountability with the secret intelligence industrial complex at all. No one even knows it's there. And it's billions of tax dollars in secret budgets. That's just the tip of the constitutional problem iceberg. Now, I, I have to throw this in because I am passionate about this. Our country is suffering. We've got poverty in, in the United States. We've got a crumbling infrastructure. We've got people that are hurting. And yet, the deep state and the shadow government spend $50 billion a year is the total intelligence budget, IRS tax dollars. $598 billion is the total defense budget, $150 billion, the cost of overseas military bases, many of which are no longer necessary. $5.9 billion in military aid to foreign countries. 5.9 to Pakistan and other countries that really don't like us very much. But we're giving them this kind of taxpayer dollars uh, to fund and operate their programs. I think we just gave Saudi Arabia, uh, I think it was $2 billion in military equipment. Saudi Arabia hates us. The very foundational doctrine of the Saudi Wahhabi doctrine is they hate the West and we're, we're feeding them billions of your dollars. Four billion in congressional lobbyists. This is how much congressional lobbyists influence the congressmen and senators every single year. Now, we have a problem with this. I do, because I'm passionate about this. $803 billion of your money is going towards this, while the cost to Americans' vital security, the important things, the federal government was created to take care of the safety and security of its people. That's its function, right? Or at least it used to be. Well, Social Security, 
They stole the money. It is empty. It's in the red. Congress and Senate stole that money. Oh, it's an entitlement program. No, it's not. Most of you out there, especially that are retired, we contributed our entire, our entire life in a mandatory fashion into Social Security, didn't we not? That is our money that we put in there in every single paycheck. They stole it and took it out and spent it. And it's now gone. And now they're, they're saying, oh, Social Security may not survive. There's not enough money left. Well, I can tell you where you can take that money from right here. Put it back from where you stole it from. What about this? Oh, Medicare. Oh, these seniors costing us all these entitlement programs. We've got to defund that and scale it back. If we don't, Medicare is going to go bankrupt in 10 years. I can tell you where to get the money from Medicare. How about right here? We didn't vote for any of this anyway. A little bit more. Medicaid. We've got to defund it. It's an entitlement program. We're giving things to people that they're not working. So we've got to take it back. We don't have the money to fund Medicaid anymore. Well, we can see now why we don't. It's being taken. Healthcare took decades for them to do. When seniors had no health insurance, some people were dying, they were going bankrupt. So they come up with health care, and as is often the case with government, they mess it up. Now they're looking at it again, and if you could imagine what they want to do now uh, in the current administration is they want to exempt pre-existing conditions from health care because it's too expensive. How many people out there know somebody with a pre-existing condition? Touch the neighbor next to you and everybody's touching somebody. That's 40, 50% of the American population will not be given insurance under the new program. And, and if they are, it's going to have to be maybe twice as expensive so they can cover their own risk. Nonsense. The infrastructure is crumbling. The economy, unemployment, poverty, the economy is really about 20%. Americans are suffering in this country. And how in the world can there be poverty in the United States of America when we've got that kind of money floating around out there to topple governments, engage in foreign coups, and send missiles and things like that to Syria? I think that maybe it's time for us to rock the boat a little bit, maybe? Yeah. Now, let's focus on my old home, uh, the central note of the shadow government. Harry Truman created the CIA without congressional input or approval. In, uh, it was 1947, uh, National Security Act, and then it went into force in 1948. After four or five years of CIA operations, they had gotten so off the rails human rights violations, on and on and on it went. He made this statement in an op-ed in the Washington Post. Quote, there is something about the way the CIA has been functioning that is casting a shadow on our historic position of freedom and I feel we need to correct it. Ironically, that was in the Washington Post, December 22nd, 1963. Three days later, the Post removed that article. Washington Post, CFR, CIA, Philip and Catherine Cram. His article was pulled. He later made the statement he considered the CIA was a sinister and mysterious agency. Having been there, I can tell you, as most people know, that is a fact. So let's talk about this. <clears throat> Humbly, meekly, and mildly, uh, I may be the first CIA guy that's ever come out and said this about it, because we, we're kind of we're kind of in a uh, bit of a, a, uh, a vice. But anyway, the CIA, the central node of the shadow, shadow government, controls all of the other agency branches. Now, they say the director of national intelligence, he was created to, to reign back in the CIA, so it's now controlled. It's not. I can tell you the CIA still controls and has influence over the other 16 intelligence agencies. Let's go on. It controls these multiple defense and intelligence contractors I just told you about. It's bound, bound them by secrecy agreements, and it's, it's got them under the state secrets privilege, and there's no wiggle room. Manipulation of the president and political decisions. Remember the false intelligence that went to the president about Iraq, intentionally falsified, by the way, that led to the worst military mistake in US history. Iraq, the Iraq invasion based on false intelligence from the CIA cost 500,000 Iraqi civilian lives. When Donald Rumsfeld, one of the faces of the shadow government, was asked, don't you feel bad about 500,000 people being killed? And his, his response was basically, well, Things happen. Yeah, things, things happen, buddy, like putting you behind bars. I wish I could see that. But Iraq destabilized the entire Middle East and has been a bloodbath, and it continues to be a bloodbath, based on false intelligence fed to a president willing to accept it. 5,000 U.S. troops were killed. The estimates are between 20 and 30,000 U.S. troops have been wounded uh, or, or maimed or have PSD and are committing suicide because of the Iraq war. Awful. It has the power outside the Constitution of the United States to, States to start foreign wars through covert operations. It engaged in the torture program 
drones. To date, the drone program from the presidential kill list has taken out eight wedding parties, going after one so-called terrorist, and they took the whole wedding party out. They call it collateral damage. Human life's cheap to the shadow government, folks, and that includes us. They've staged 80 coups overseas, and they've engaged in multiple false flags. I endorsed a book called Operation Gladio, The Unholy Alliance. I recommend you read it. It's by Paul Williams. He documents the CIA staging false terrorist attacks in Italy to make it look like the Italian government was doing it, and they killed at least 491 people to do that. Operation Gladio, I highly, re highly recommend. It's so good, I reluctantly endorsed it. When I was done reading, I'm like, oh my God, he nailed it. It's created, and this is what I want to, to nail, it's created with no congressional approval. 1947, fully operational in 1948. No, no approval of Congress, no oversight votes of the American people, completely outside of the Constitution. And that's what I want you to remember. The CIA is an is a unconstitutional organization, and it functions like that. It was not created through the constitutional pro process, and that's why we're seeing the mess that we're seeing. It is staffed by unelected officials in positions of huge power that can send us to war. They're not elected by you. They're not run through Congress. They're put into place through secret clearances and secret programs, and we have nothing to say in those. Anybody feeling warm and fuzzy yet? <laughs> can we pass out Excedrin maybe or something? It doesn't get any better, man, I'll tell you. All right, it manipulates Congress with secrecy. I'm gonna show you examples of that in a moment. Manipulates the judiciary through the state secrets privilege, which shuts down legal cases. The foreign surveillance uh, court, the FISA court, is a secret Supreme Court that approves warrant, warrant, warranted wiretaps on Americans outside the Constitution. Now, I want to let's go back to the roots because the tree is always an evidence of the roots of that tree, and so is the fruit, right? As the saying goes. The Central Node, the CIA, created by the National Security Act of 1947. That's what brought the CIA into being by Harry Truman. The CIA was made accountable only to the President of the United States through the National Security Council, and Truman later deeply regretted that because it was taken outside the constitutional congressional process completely, and it went com horribly wrong. This is in the National Security Act of 1947. This is the authority given to the CIA. I, wa I want to read this carefully. It allows the CIA to, quote, perform such other functions and duties as the National Security Council may from time to time direct. How broad is that? And the thing is, it said nothing about authority for covert operations anywhere, ever, in its entire charter, in its original setup, nothing. So there's no definition of what the CIA can or cannot do. There is no restriction on what the CIA can or cannot do. It, it thumbs its nose at the Constitution with impunity. There's no democratic or congressional oversight over the Central Intelligence Agency at all. It is an outside, unconstitutional federal agency that, that operates with impunity. It's a serious constitutional loophole. It has unchecked covert action. Not even Congress knows much. Only a few congressmen knew about running guns into Benghazi. I was on the Benghazi Commission. And only a few congressmen and the Speaker of the House knew that Hillary Clinton was running guns secretly from Qatar and Saudi Arabia into Benghazi, which wound up in the hands of Al-Qaeda, which wound up in the hands of ISIS. The CIA started out like this, a single build building in Foggy Bottom in Washington, D.C. Okay, they created an intelligence unit. Originally, Truman wanted objective intelligence provided to the president. That's why he created it. Because it's outside the Constitution, over the years, this used to be my home. This is what it's become, and this is just in Langley, Virginia, a monster of an organization. The exact number of CIA employees is classified, so let's just say it's tens of thousands. So, we're being told that there's a new Cold War with Russia, aren't we? The, the mainstream media, which I had an hour on that one, is telling us that Russia controlled our elections, hacked into everybody, I'm convinced that that's why my washer doesn't work, it's because of Vladimir Putin. <laughs> but what they're not telling us is there's an internal cold war inside the beltway in Washington between the elected government and the shadow government. There's a war. Anybody noticed? <laughs> Things are kind of crazy? Yeah. The shadow government is a huge complex of secrecy, surveillance, and covert programs that not even Congress knows all about. It is the size of 23 U.S. Capitol buildings. 
20, it's the size of three pentagons. And it has spied on the US Senate of the United States when they were processing and writing the torture report. CIA Director John Brennan hacked into the Senate computers and the Senate Select Committee on Intelligence to see what they found out about what the CIA was doing in torture. They went so far as to hack into the emails of the Senate staffers to find out what they were writing and how the report was going to turn out. Ladies and gentlemen, is that a violation of the Constitution? Is that a violation of law? What would you call that? A felony. Uh, was John Brennan indicted? Was he charged with anything? No. He, he, he went on about his merry way. Now, this is the chilling part. The CIA spied on the U.S. Senate and President Obama could do nothing about it. Everybody was saying, Obama, he was behind it the whole time. He was getting Brennan to do it. No, that's not what happened. John, uh, President Barack Obama could do nothing about what the CIA was doing. They asked him, what did you think about Brennan hacking into the computers? He said, well, I have full confidence in John Brennan. He, couldn't, he could not stop the CIA from doing that, and he could not uh, hold Brennan accountable for doing that. The President of the United States does not have power over the shadow government or the CIA. And, he, and nothing happened to these people because there's nothing that Barack Obama could do about it. It's not that he was behind it. He couldn't touch it. What does the CIA do, having lived this for 15 years? Their currency is the currency of fear. So what did John Brennan do when he was, should have been convicted of a felony? Oh, no, no, no. The Senate staffers accessed classified CIA information. Uh, they got into CIA documents that they didn't have the clearance for, so we're going to go get them. That, that's how they do it. Fear. It didn't work. But that's the first card that they tried to play. Now, enter Donald Trump. <laughs> We were talking about him on break, man. Uh, he is out of the box enough to do something. And that's what they're terrified of. What do you think he's a, some people think he's a patriot. Some people think he's a narcissist. Some people think he's a fascist. Some people think he's a businessman, should have stayed in business. Some people think that he's broke. Well, it goes, goes across the spectrum. But he has terrified the shadow government. His first statements, you got to kind of like that somehow. His first statements were, I'm going to go into the CIA and we're going to examine their programs and we're going to find out what they've been doing. Especially, I want to know the facts about JFK and that assassination. <laughs> so how do you think the shadow government, the CIA and the NSA re reacted to that one? Because they got a lot of giant skeletons in their closet. Senate Minority Leader Chuck Schumer, a deep stater, came out and said this. Anybody hear this interview? I want you to think about this. If you cross the intelligence community, President of the United States, quote, they, the CIA and the NSA, have six ways from Sunday at getting back at you. Just, this, just let that hang there for Adam. You mean the intelligence community can take out the President of the United States if he cross? That's what he's saying. This man's a deep stater. Schumer knows what he's talking about. The only other time in history that we have seen something this dark and dramatic between specifically the CIA shadow government and the President of the United States was back then. That is Alan Dulles, probably one of the most wicked men ever walked the earth, director of the CIA, crossed JFK. JFK fired him for engaging in covert, covert operations without telling JFK about it. JFK fired Alan Dulles. Alan Dulles set up his own uh, ring of former high-level CIA officers to work against JFK, stop his policies and politically bring him down. Now, we all know he was assassinated. Guess who they put in charge of the Warren Commission? Guess who put himself in charge of the Warren Commission to find out about the assassination? Alan Dulles. Alan Dulles chose what CIA agents would testify and which ones would not. He also coached the CIA people that did testify on what they could say and what they could not. The fox was over the hen house. The guy that Kennedy fired wound up being the guy supposedly investigating his assassination. And it was clear that Alan Dulles wanted to bring him down. Now, that's just history. <laughs> you can draw conclusions, and there are conclusions to be drawn. You can go out there and check this all out. As if it is a history. Uh, and there's something very, very, very chilling here. And this remains today. It hasn't changed. Shadow government, government hasn't changed. It's been the same since 1947. Now, I want to touch on this briefly. I just met with a couple of the top NSA guys who've come out. Uh, the NSA, I call them the eyes and the ears of the shadow government. They're in the top two, remember? The CIA and the NSA. That's why I'm focusing on them. 
Remember the NSA domestic surveillance program? They were collecting 1.5 billion bits of information on you and me, our emails, our phone calls, our texts, uh, the content of, of our emails, uh, electronic parking, everything digitally that we did, the NSA was collecting. So, two years ago, I think it was, they reformed the NSA program because of Edward Snowden. If Edward Snowden had not happened, there would be no reform. Well, Mr. Former Counterintelligence Investigator Kevin Shipp, don't you think Edward Snowden was a horrible, awful traitor? No. <laughs> I, think, I think he's a hero. Yeah. And I was in counterintelligence. If it wasn't for him, we would not have known that the NSA was violating our Fourth Amendment right to the tune of 1.5 billion bits of information a day. And he did the right thing. If Edward Snowden had stayed around and gone through the process, there would be no Edward Snowden. I promise you that. All of the information, however, that was collected before the reform, I like what, what Ron Paul said. He said, anytime the government says it's reformed something, you need to be suspicious. <laughs> all of the information that they collected on all of us before this reform, they didn't go back and erase that. It's still there. All of the inf information on all of us is still there. There is so much that they call the amount, they had to come up with a new word. There is so much information they, they, they have uh, gauged it in, in a term called Yodo Bites. It's enough bits and bytes to fill the state of Rhode Island and Delaware with, with bits and bytes. That's how massive this database is. It's called the Utah Data Center. As we know, they had the exclusive authority. Obama did this. This has just come out. There's more names that they unmasked of Americans. To unmask Americans and reveal their names and the intelligence they collected, they have created a new secret Supreme Court called the FISA Report that will approve the surveillance of Americans inside the United States. A judge came out, blew the whistle. The FISA court approved 30,000 surveillance warrants in one year, and they only denied 12. Now, I want you to remember this one. Uh, cybersecurity. They have now given the NSA cybersecurity authority to investigate any case in the United States on a US citizen that involves cybersecurity. Do you know how broad that is? Well, we have a security issue here, possible hacking. Uh, NSA, you can now go ahead and surveil that American because we think we have a cyber security case. They took their power from here and they put it here. The CIA and the NSA are both shielded by the state secrets privilege, which I'm going to break down here in a moment, which shuts down any case by any citizen or corporation that tries to expose what they're doing. Absolute tyranny. It started out as a cipher bureau, also called the Black Chamber, is how the NSA started. That's how big it was. This is how big it is now. This is the Utah Data Center. That's how big that is. It's a multi-billion dollar facility. And the the, the uh, computers there are so intensive. They have to have cooling systems the size of warehouses to cool the data that's processing in the Utah Data Center. That's how massive that database is. So let's get back. Let's get back to the Constitution again. Something that people have lived and died for in this country, thinking it was really in place, which it should be, Let's get back to the Constitution, because that's what America should be all about, and, and used to be about. Congress is, as I've said a couple of times, what? It's our voice. It's our only voice in Washington, is it not? They're supposed to represent the people. If you're the shadow government and you want to control the people, who do you want to control? Congress. And that's exactly what they're doing. Congress has the legal authority to control the CIA through its budget. That sounds really good, doesn't it? The only problem with it is this. The CIA classifies and withholds all the documents necessary for Congress to do that. And they're completely paralyzed. They don't know what to regulate. The entire budget is secret. So there's nothing they can do. Boom. Well played, CIA. Well played. <laughs> Congressional oversight. The House Permanent Select Committee on Intelligence, the Senate Select Committee on Intelligence. Well, we've got oversight of the CIA with the, the Congressional Oversight Committees. No, we don't. I know from being in there. These committees are understaffed. Most of the investigative work is done by a handful of staffers who are inexperienced. The turnover is huge. And most congressmen and senators are never going to dig deep into the CIA, because if they do, it is political suicide. They don't go there. I've been told there's closets full of things that they should be investigating. They just shut the door and ignore them. And I, I have a, a personal case uh, of that actually happening. Mil military industrial lobbyists, I, I showed you that, control congressmen and senators, no doubt about it. There's a revolving door between Congress and the Senate and the military industrial complex. If you do what uh, Lido's Holdings does, if you do what Lockheed Martin wants you to do, when you leave Congress, if you're a, a staffer or a senator, you're looking at a six million dollar job with General Dynamics, which they promise you through the whole process. Former FBI Director James Comey, 
when he worked with, with the para government, Lockheed Martin, they paid James Comey $6 million in one year while Lockheed was making big contributions into the Clinton Foundation. Comey goes back, Comey goes back to the HSBC laundering money from Mexican cartels and CIA involved. I mean, the guy's rap sheet reads like a CIA operative, for goodness sake. And we all see how he, he basically indicted Hillary and then let her walk. If one of us in the CIA had done one one hundredth of what she did, we'd lose our job and probably be, be in jail. Shadow government, secret government, controlling electric government, probably one of the clearest cases in the last 20 years I've ever seen. And sadly, our congressmen and senators, most of them with a couple of exceptions, except Rand Paul being one in my view, Congress is now composed not of constitutionalists, but statesmen. They have no intention of changing the system. They are part of the state. They want to stay part of the state. They want to keep their incumbency. They don't want to change anything. They are statesmen. There's a big difference between a congressman and senator and a statesman. Now, what about these Obama plans and the shadow government? The shadow government has cross-party influence, both Democratic and Republican administrations. Clinton Bush Sr engaged in the Iran-Contra drug running scandal. Violated US law, violated international law, ran drugs down into South America. That was George Bush and uh, Bill Clinton working together in tandem on this. Nothing to do with party. George W. Bush, God help us. Iraq, NSA surveillance, CIA torture, secret prisons, FBI warrantless sources, and on and on and on. How bad can you get? But let's go back to the Democrats. Barack Obama prosecuted more whistleblower leakers than any president in US history grossly expanded the NSA surveillance program to the tune of now the NSA can dis distribute its information on US citizens to all the other 16 intelligence agencies. Gross expansion. The presidential kill list and the drone program, running guns into Syria, supporting the Free Syrian Army. The Free Syrian Army, by the way, which we, we are still supporting, we being in the shadow government, the Free Syrian Army went into one of the only Christian villages in Syria and massacred the whole population on behalf of the United States government. Uh, most of them are radical Islamists. Many of them have morphed into ISIS. They are, they are driving US tanks, carrying and using US weapons. That's just a head shaker. Hillary Clinton took several million dollars from Saudi Arabia into the Clinton Foundation while she was Secretary of State, took hundreds of thousands of dollars from Wall Street and the military, military industrial com complex, ran guns into Libya and Benghazi, and intentionally overthrew Muammar Gaddafi when he was trying to make peace with the US, even told the US government and the Secretary of State and the President, if you want me to leave Libya, I'll do it. I'll get a safe haven in another country, whatever the US wants. Secretary Clinton engaged in what I consider a de facto assassination of Muammar Gaddafi, ruined that entire country. They took billions of the, dollar, of the dollars and laundered it into the, into the black market. I did on the Intelligence Hour two weeks ago, we got into that in some detail. Can you see that the shadow government is not just uh, condensed into one party or administration? No, it's been going on since 1948. What about Congress? Congress will tell us, the voters, oh yeah, I'm going to go to Washington and I'm going to reform this mess. We're going to clean all this up. And, but what do they do? They wind up supporting shadow government, deep state wars, Syria, on and on, uh, uh, covert operations. And it was Congress and Senate, many of them, the Gang of Eight especially, that approved the NSA domestic surveillance program. See, they're not saying much about that, but there are congressmen and senators that knew about that program and approved it. So, I think maybe we've lost Congress, and that's one of our big problems. Let's go through some constitutional violations. I apologize for having to move kind of quick because we're gonna get to the crux of the matter here shortly. Remember I said that a constitutional violation is what? A felony or multiple felonies. Let me go through just some of them. Control of congressional hearings, withholding documents and testimony from Congress, blocking Congress from covert programs, classifying and concealing illegal operations like drug running in South America and elsewhere, establishing covert funding from an illegal activity that Congress didn't know about, engaging in some illicit stuff, making money, funding CIA programs with money that was out completely outside of Congress. Surveillance of the Congress. The CIA surveilled the Senate, NSA eavesdropped on congressmen's conversations about the Iran nuclear deal. The NSA broke into the conversations of congressmen and recorded and surveilled their conversations. A felony. Control of the judiciary through the FISA court and state secrets privilege, secret use of Americans' tax dollars, we should all be upset about that, surveillance of US citizens, and officials lying under oath. I have tapes of each one of these. The director of national intelligence lied to Congress under oath. The CIA lied to Congress under oath. That's no surprise. The NSA did and the FBI did. Robert Mueller, when asked if the FBI was breaking into Americans' homes without a warrant, said, well, we only do it in a few terrorist cases. 
Well, they dug up some information. No, no, we know that you do it in just more than a few. He goes, okay, well, we've done it 47 times. Serious terrorist cases. So a good, a good uh, staffer did some work and said, nah, it's a lot more than that. We got you on 2,000. So Robert Mueller, under oath, said, uh, okay, 2,000. They did some more digging. He said, no, it's, uh, uh, director, it's not 2,000, it's 4,000. His response was, oh, okay, it's 4,000. They did some more checking, and they said, we've got evidence that it was more than 4,000. Do you know what his response was? Director, how, ex can you tell us exactly how many times you've broken into Americans' homes without a warrant? You know what his response was? Well, I can't remember. <laughs> Pardon me? <clears throat> I think I just, uh, feel, uh, yeah, cheaper. you can't remember who, how many Americans, how you, that is a lie, uh, and that's under oath. He knows darn well how many Americans' houses they broke broken without a warrant, and it was thousands. Some more constitutional violations, secret, oper secret operations in, in, involving human rights violations. In Syria, so far, 475,000 Syrian civilians have been killed through the CIA-backed, U.S.-backed uh, rebels. 100,000 Syrian military have, have died. That's 10% of their population. If those were, were Americans, that would be the equivalent of 1 million Americans being killed by a foreign government in Syria to topple Syria. Uh, Propping up the government of Augusto Pinochet in Chile, the CIA paid and supported the murder, murder, execution, and torture of 40,000 Chilean citizens and the disappearance of 200,000 more. And the CIA was paying junta officials under Pinochet that they knew had human rights violations, that they knew were executing people, and they were on the CIA's payroll. More constitutional violations. Silencing whistleblowers by putting them in prison like John, John Kiriakou for revealing the torture program. Secret prisons, rendition torture, which was not just waterboarding. There were people killed, seriously wounded by the what, enhanced interrogation program, <laughs> the torture program. See, they always, that's what a snake does. That's what a serpent does, you know. You can go ahead and eat that apple. It's not going to hurt you, you know. It's enhanced interrogation. It's not torture. Uh, it was torture. People died, electrocuted. National security letters where the FBI can go into your, into your place of business and demand your supervisor turn over all your stuff, warrantless searches I talked about. That constitutional violation, the drone assassination program, did anybody vote for that? There is a pre presidential kill list. He has a kill list. Well, Mr. President, who do you want to take out today? Well, let's take out Joe Schmo. And it's no longer definite information that the person is a terrorist. They do it now based on behavioral profile. If you can imagine that. Well, you kind of acts like a terrorist, let's blow up the whole wedding party. That's what they're doing now, based on behavior, not on the fact that Muhammad is actually a documented terror, but they, they, they can't even go there now. It's just based on, well, the guy kind of acts like a terrorist, so let's take out the whole party. More, 9-11. <clears throat> Since 9-11, we have been put, our government has been put under what's called the continuity of government, continuation of government, continuity of government program. What that means is, when George W. Bush declared the war on terror, that was an important term because when the United States goes into a state of war, it suspends the Constitution under the continuity of government program. It came to the desk of Barack Obama and he continued the continuity of government. We are still in a state of emergency because of the war on terror, which means based on continuity of government, they can suspend the Constitution anytime, anytime they want, right now, because it has not been, it has not been reversed. Do we have a constitutional problem here? And ladies and gentlemen, this is probably 30%. The list could be longer if we had time. So what does the shadow government do? If you play by the rules, you'll get rewarded. If you don't, people like me, they'll uh, turn on your cell phone and stuff like that. But if you play by the rules, here is George W. Bush giving the Presidential Medal of Freedom to CIA Director George Tenet, re rewarding him for providing falsified intelligence leading to the Iraq War and the death of hundreds of thousands of people on purpose. Withholding critical information prior to 9-11, the CIA was tracking and had the identities of two of the alleged bombers the entire time leading up to the attack. After the attack, the CIA was the only federal agency that refused to provide any information on what it knew before 9-11. It classified everything. George Tenet, master of the torture program, renditions and secret prisons and invoked the state's secrets privilege to seal cases against them more than any other CIA director in history. Now, guess who his chief of staff was the whole time he was doing this? None other than our sinister buddy, John Brennan, who was later rewarded to be who? The director of the CIA, following in George Tenet's footsteps. See, the shadow government rewards the faithful. 
What did Brennan do? More torture, drones, spying on the Senate, and more use of the state secrets privilege, just like his daddy, George Tenet. The shadow government continues. They will reward their own despite gross violations of the Constitution. I call this, in the book, the tyranny of secrecy. This is the new tyranny. They use secrecy to engage in things that are not only, constitution, not only unconstitutional, they are flat out illegal. And they're directed not at foreign governments, but at the American people. It is the new form of tyranny. If you want to keep things from Congress and outside of the elected gov government, what do you do? You classify it. Do you remember this quote? The very word secrecy is repugnant to a free and open society. And there is very grave danger that an announced need for increased security, 9-11, will be seized upon by those anxious to expand its meaning to the very limits of official censorship and concealment. Have we seen that? Now, going back to when this statement was, was made, he also said this, I will splinter the CIA into a thousand pieces and scatter it to the winds. Enter Alan Dulles, enter the assassination, enter Alan Dulles being charged of the Warren Commission, the Fox investigating the Hen House, and that's how that transpired. Our government has not been the same since 1948 and the creation of the CIA. That's when we lost our constitution. It was in 1947, 1948. I want to talk about this because you need to know about this. The state secrets privilege, the ultimate in government tyranny, an Air Force B-29 Super Fortress bomber on a so-called classified mission crashed in Waycross, Georgia, supposedly in, in a classified experiment. Nine of the crew members were killed. <clears throat> Excuse me. Three of them were civilian RCA members. So the widows of the RC members asked the, the Air Force, demanded, we want to know how our husbands died. What happened? I mean, we lost our husbands, their, their kids, one of which is in my book. Uh, we lost our dads. What happened? Well, the Air Force said, well, we can't tell you what happened because the details are classified. We're going to see more of this MO later. Believe me, it's classified. And the widows filed suit. I don't said, oh, no, it's not. We want to know what made that thing crash and what killed our husbands. So what did the government do? It invented this. This is based on the doctrine of the monarch of King of England. That's where the state secrets privilege came from. I thought we were supposed to be free from the king, weren't we? Wasn't that the, the general idea? That's where they got the state secrets privilege was, and they shut the entire case down, sealed it, and told the widows if they talked about it, they'd go to prison. However, the crash report was found on the internet, unclassified, and what it revealed was serious gross negligence on part of the pilots that drove that thing right into the ground. I've been to the site, it's in Waycross, Georgia, if you got a chance, go there and, and visit. It's, it's pretty, uh, pretty sad. So the executive and the judiciary branch made the state secrets privilege law. It is now law. And what is most chilling is the most tyrannical power of the US government, which has shut down any scrutiny of the NSA surveillance program. The most tyrannical power of the US government is based on a lie told by the Air Force connected to classified programs and the secret government, and now used with impunity to seal any legal cases brought by civilians or groups or corporations against the NSA. They shut it down, seal the information, and not even Congress will ever have access to it forever. The state secrets privilege. Here it is, ladies and gentlemen, I found it. This is the report out on the internet. You can find it yourself, you can read it. The gross negligence that happened when the pilots tried to correct the trim of the plane, drove that thing right into the ground. That's the actual report on the internet. Not, there's nothing classified about that. There's nothing secret about that. This is Elizabeth Pilia, her daughter Judith Lotha, who I interviewed for the book, uh, said she lost all faith in her country, felt betrayed for the first time. They went without any compensation for their husband's death. Their suit was thrown out by the Supreme Court, and they never got justice because of a government lie. Classification and secrecy has been used to protect the government from unconstitutional avenue, uh, activity ever since 1948 when the state secrets privilege happened. That's where it all went bad right there, folks. All right, does the shadow government control our government? Well, we're kind of getting there, aren't we? Does the shadow government manipulate the elected government? We're kind of getting there, aren't we? Well, let me show you some things. Control over Congress manipulates congressional hearings with false testimony, classified documents, refusing, refusing to provide information, withholds clearances from congressmen and senators, classifies documents to conceal illegal activity, blocks Congress and, and the Senate using the state secrets privilege. It controls the White House, classified operations that the president doesn't even know about, manipulating the president with false intelligence like Iraq. It even steps in between the president and his or her reelection if it has to. It can stop a president from being elected. It controls the judiciary through the state secrets privilege and the secret FISA court. It controls our elected government. 
Okay, all right, here we go. Let's, uh, we only have another four hours. <laughs> but, all right, let, let me wrap it up. So, so what does the shadow government do? What is its modus operandi? How does it control Congress? Well, if you want to conceal unconstitutional or illegal, illegal activity, what do you do? Congress demands a torture report. So, the CIA provides it. <laughs> Congress demands the NSA surveillance FISA court documents. So, NSA provides it. Congress demands fast and furious, why they're running guns or how into drug cartels in Mexico. So, the intelligence community provides it. And then, the 9-11 transparency, uh, 9-11 commission report, supposedly given to the American people to find out what happened on the, the attacks of 9-11, CIA refuses to give anything to the 9-11 Commission. Finally, they release this. 28 pages of the 9-11 report are blacked out relating to Saudi intelligence involvement in the attacks, its connection to CIA intelligence, and on and on and on it goes. That's a whole other hour. That's what they do. All right, we're going to wrap it up real quick. The, the question that, that I'll answer as we, as we f finish this up here is, if these things are happening in this, this size scale, why is no one, other than your humble correspondent, <laughs> blowing the whistle and revealing these things? If there are thousands of people, come, why is no one saying anything? There is an exact system of destruction set up by the government to silence whistleblowers and personally and completely and totally destroy them. And I got to wrap this up real quick. What I did real quickly is the CIA tried to, to uh, tell me I could never say I worked there. Uh, and then there are, there's a lot of fake CIA officers out there, which is really uh, irritating for me. So what I did real quickly through a Freedom of Information Act requ request is I got my counterintelligence uh, performance appraisals and all that other stuff, unbeknownst to the CIA through a Freedom of Information Act request, and I put them in the book. <laughs> so, you know, not trying to be a big dog, I'm just saying, can't shoot that one down, can you? This is why I'm still standing here today, otherwise I'd, probably, I'd be a puff of smoke. All right, let me wrap this up. Uh, they put me under a gag order when I first came out about this stuff, but they wouldn't let me see the gag order. For two years, they said my gag order was too sensitive uh, for me to even see for two years. <laughs> I went to the Senate Select Committees and they completely ignored it. After two years, they finally provided me the gag order and here she is. <laughs> Does that look familiar to you? Same MO. You could call this, uh, and my case was sealed. I was told I would go to prison if I talked about it to anyone, so I put it in a book. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> system of entrapment. They were trying and they still are to get me to say something that violated a gag order I didn't even have. That's what they do. Okay, let's wrap this up, you guys. There is a system to destroy whistleblowers. It is exact. It will destroy them financially, personally. It will de destroy their career. And if necessary, it will go after their family and destroy their family financially. And I don't have time to go in. These whistleblower acts are a farce. Uh, we don't have time to go into detail. There's an internal system of personal destruction. And on and on and on. The news media is compliant. So there is a whole system that they use. Sadly, we don't have time, maybe at another conference, to go into it. But there is a, a specific system that they use to destroy a whistleblower. And they use it, they've used it thousands of times because it works. If the employee f files suit, the CIA blocks them from getting their own attorney. The CIA classifies all of the employee and, and their attorney's information and says now the CIA owns it. It locks it up in CIA headquarters so that the, uh, the attorney and the employee can't see their own notes from their own sessions. On and on it goes. It delays the case. It, it invokes the state secret privilege and says the, that they're going to send the employee to prison if they talk about it to anyone. That's why no one is coming out. All right, we're wrapping it up here. I want to get to the end and then I'll stop. Uh, it goes on and on and I've documented this. Uh, it's a refined system to, to destroy these people. That's why you don't see them coming out. It's, in some cases, it, it is death. It's total destruction of the whistleblower. Do you remember the case of Gary Webb? The perfect crime. Lost his family, lost his career, was financially destroyed, went bankrupt, uh, wound up in a hotel room with two bullets in his head. Supposedly a suicide. How you shoot yourself twice in the head, I don't know. Bill Binney exposed the NSA surveillance program. FBI SWAT team raided his house. Thomas Drake went through this, the security intelligence communities to report uh, fraud in the NSA. FBI SWAT team raided his house, charged him with espionage. Kirk Wiebe, same thing. FBI raided his house. John Kirikow, as Dane mentioned, put in prison for two years for blowing the whistle on the, on the torture program. So as a, what did I do in the book? Because they blacked out pages in the book. It was illegal for them to do that. They cannot black out information. That's not classified. It was environmental tests, doctor's diagnosis, break-ins, witness testimony. So what I did was I put a code in the book, a digital code that exposes, this is the actual shadow of a young man who almost died. They didn't know that was his actual shadow. <laughs> they do now. <laughs> and I, I put it in the book. So shadow government hates the light. As I wrap it up, last couple of slides, what do we do about this? 
And, and, and again, I, this is another six, seven hours of information. What can we as Americans do? Because we have a shadow government now that is running our elected government behind the scenes. What can we do? Well, one of the things, start a grassroots civil movement across America. All of us, every great movement that's been started from Gandhi to Martin Luther King started with one person that decided that they had had enough and they were gonna do it the right way. Right. Establish thousands of groups, cause a social media storm like Dana's gonna do when he publishes this video on YouTube. What did we hit, a million the last time or something? Woo! Yeah. The last, last talk we gave on the secret government, we hit a million hits uh, uh, as we count now. Cause a social media storm. They know we have the internet and they're scared of that. Trust me. Fire them all. Congressmen and senators that are statesmen, fire them. And elect constitutionalists at every level. Kick them out. Get them out of there and put constitutionalists in there. Demand total intelligence agency reform. What I would like to see, frankly, as a former CIA officer, is a complete reform of the CIA and maybe a complete dismantling of that unconstitutional dark organization. Something's got to be done. We, we have got to never forget this, you guys, ever. This is government by the people. That's why it was created. Congress and Senate are your representatives, not the CIA and not the military industrial complex. A constitutional government is supposed to serve the people, not the other way around. Government violations of the Constitution are what? A felony. The government has broken constitutional law. They're using your tax dollars to do all of this. And the weapon of tyranny is fear. The shadow government wants you to fear it. The biggest hurdle for me I got over was, was way back in 2012 when I decided I was not going to fear them anymore. When you decide you're not going to fear them, you're free. That is their only weapon against you. So when I wrap it up, I always like to leave my audiences with this quote attributed to Thomas Jefferson because it is so important. When people fear their government, there is tyranny. When the government fears the people, there is liberty. That's it, you guys. Thank you very much.